I would find it very hard to believe if you haven't stumbled across one of these recipes, one of these images of late because they are absolutely everywhere. It's back in vogue. It's delicious, it's slightly burnt, it's the Basque cheesecake. Okay, so having originated in San Sebastian, Spain, I was fortunate enough to get this recipe off a friend of mine, Gary Megan, who got his recipe from a friend of his who has a restaurant in San Sebastian. So all I'm gonna say is finally, this is where the buck stops. I hand it over to you, that's it. You keep it to your damn self, all right? So how we're gonna kick this off, we've got some cream cheese, good hit of cream cheese in here, uh, a couple of hundred grams, sugar into the stand mixer and we're going with the paddle attachment. We don't want to go in with the whisk, we don't want to get too much aeration happening. And it's one of these recipes where being a little bit more patient, being a little bit more delicate is going to pay off dividends with the final product, okay? Slow and steady, nice and gentle, right? So we'll kick it off with the cream cheese and the sugar, get that just emulsifying, bring it together. We might get a little bit of a whip happening in there. Uh, and then the next step, three eggs, one at a time. All right, so we've got the third egg in there and you can see what's happening in the bowl. It's starting to resemble like a, a thick custard, okay? So we've, we've got that really nice and smooth. There's no lumps in there, which is where we want to be. Now the next step, a little bit of flour, okay? So this is what gives the, the cheesecake that little bit of body, that bit of backbone to support it. So to introduce that, it's very similar to like doing a, an old school gravy where you, you probably would have seen your nan do. So we get a little bit of flour, a little bit of the stock out. So we're gonna do that with the, the cream. Just put a little bit of the cream in there and then whisk that through. Just to make a nice paste, we can add a little bit more and that's just gonna safeguard us against pouring in any, any of that flour, having a little lump or something that won't get mixed through properly. So a little bit more cream and just whisk that through. Get it really, really nice and smooth. Right, now going with the rest of the cream, fold that flour through, and then we introduce that into our cream cheese base. So while we've still got that running, and you can see you've probably never really used a stand mixer at this speed before. It's just slowly working it around. So we're not, we're not creating any aeration in there. Um, and once you put the flour in, you're not gonna you're not gonna overwork any of that either. So you still get a really nice, soft outcome. Right, so we get all the cream in there. Let that do its thing. Keep it going at this pace, all right? Keep it going. Then we're going with the, the really simple seasonings. A uh, little bit of lemon juice for some nice acidity, some vanilla for that, that flavor and that fragrance, and a little pinch of salt. Uh, and we are almost home. But this is like a perfect example of what Sunday baking is like, or a weekend baking, or a day off baking. It's just about slow it down, and enjoy. Right, so our cream and flour mix has been fully incorporated. I'm just gonna pop that up now and go in with these, these seasonings. So a, a generous pinch of salt, okay? That's just gonna highlight the, the sweetness and also the vanilla, okay? So you want the salt in there, it's gonna really lift the, the flavor of the vanilla. So we've got about a teaspoon of vanilla essence in there and a little bit of lemon. So it's that, you get that beautiful acidity out of the cream cheese, but the lemon is just, again, just gonna brighten it and bring it up to the top. So I'm thinking, you know, a, a tablespoon or, or a half a lemon. And it's one of those things, if you wanted to push it a little bit further, you could probably throw a touch more in, but that's probably about a tablespoon, right? Pop it back down, you know the drill. Number one, bring it all together, and then we're ready to go into the tin. So we've got the oven preheated at 220. Once we get it in there, you sort of go 50% bake, Flip it, because we want to get that really, really nice even color. And it's that, that image that it's renowned for. It's got that beautiful burnish, almost going towards burnt uh, top on it, which again, it just gives it that personality and that flavor um, that is really very hard to replicate. Have a look at that. It's uh, it's like part cheesecake, part creme caramel. It's got that iconic burnt surface on top, like little toffee-like caramelization. Absolutely stunning, all right? 
that is, that's, that's a pretty good example of what it should look like. So we're just gonna unwrap it here. Look at that, around the edges, everything, oof. All right, so the key to this, again, it's like through the whole cooking process and the, the creation of it, you've had to be really patient, take it easy, uh, and, and even after it's cooked, you've got to abide by those same principles. Let it rest, let it relax. Uh, you can either sit it out at room temp, you can put it in the fridge and let it set, but a couple of hours before you're gonna cut into it, all right? So I'm just gonna transfer this over to our little cake stand here. And it is quite rich, it's intense. You don't need a lot. So a couple of little accompaniments just to freshen it up and give you that ability to go the extra mile. If you wanna go back for an extra slice, you've got some beautiful yogurt here from, uh, from Mulaney. Blackberries that we picked up from the Noosa Farmers Market. The perfect match here, all right? So I'm just gonna cut, cut a little slab. over them. <laughs> I'm just drifting off on a little pillowy cloud of bass cheesecake. Don't mind if I do.